My name is Arthur Vickers. I'm a principal engineer on the .NET Data Access team at Microsoft, and I'm going to talk to you today about using EF Core to transition, transition uh, an application that's using a traditional relational database like SQL Server or Azure SQL to a document database, in this case, Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, so first off, uh, the API we're going to try and transition here, I've trimmed it down to just the uh, really important points. Uh, so we'll notice here that we've got two APIs, get shows and get show. These ones are used very, very frequently. So we want those to be really fast. Um, on the other hand, the add episode is used only rarely compared to the get show and get show, so it's okay. So to reiterate, we want the use frequently ones to be really fast, but we're okay if the add episode can be slower, so we may trade off perf there. So in a traditional relational model, we're going to have three tables, shows, episodes, and writers. Everything for a show is in the show table and so on for the other two tables. And this can be a bit problematic because this does not necessarily and often won't, certainly as you go down the road of your application, match what your database shape looks like. So uh, in our relational database, for example, if we want to create this response body that contains the information for uh, any of the show listings, we actually have to get some of the information from the shows table, but then we also have to get information from the episodes table and from the writers table just to produce this simple response body that we're going to show. And we want to do this very quickly, which is so it's obviously not ideal to be getting from lots of tables. Okay, so I'm going to just show um, how this uh, works in the relational implementation. So I'm using EF Core with SQL Server here. And if I run this, it's going to start my web API with Swagger. And we can see here that I can, I can use the Get Shows API. I'm going to execute that and try it out. If everything worked, we got the correct data, which is um, what we wanted. But what I want to show here is actually we ended up writing a SQL query for that, which is not a bad SQL query, uh, all being considered, but it is going uh, to get things from both the episodes table and the writers table, as well as the shows table. And so that's what we're, we're trying to avoid. If we actually copy this ID here, and go down to the next API, which is to get the details of a specific show. If I try this, you'll see, again, it works. But if we go again and look at the query, in this case, it's got even worse because we're doing a bunch of calculations, bringing in data from different tables there. OK, so that's where we're starting from. And uh, we have a plan. And our plan is to switch to a document database, in this case, Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL. Um, and the reason for that is document databases are very good, very fast at returning a single document or information from a single document. So um, the important thing there is then, for, if we're going to use this for a fast API, we need to ensure that all data for each of those APIs is in a single document. So uh, going back to our uh, what we were starting with here, we need to make sure all the data for the Get Shows API comes from a single document, and likewise all the data for the Get Show API. Obviously, Get Shows it will be a series of documents, but all in one document. Okay, so let's uh, let's go and just switch to the to the Cosmos provider for that. So this is this is easy. Uh, and historically, people, you know, if you look at our .NET Conf uh, talk from last year, for example, we do this and then we show it being a relatively straightforward. But I'm going to use do something a little bit. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult. So um, if I run this now. I'm not going to wait for it to finish, um, but what we would actually see is we would end up with three different documents for each entity type saved in the Cosmos provider. Uh, and this is because there is no natural embedding here. So for example, if you had a customer and address, um, like we've, you may have seen in other demos, AEF will naturally embed the address under the customer because it fits there. But in this case, Writer doesn't embed really in episode or show. Maybe you could embed episodes in show, but there can be a lot of episodes, so that might not be ideal. Um, so we're not, we're not just getting out of the box as something that's going to work well uh, with a document provider. In fact, this model will work less well with a document database than it does with a relational database. So we need to change our modeling. One thing to note, though, when we're doing that is the EF has actually retained the relationships between these entity types. So we know that this writer ID refers to this writer document, and this show ID refers to this show document. So we can link these things together, and we're going to use that in a minute. 
So what we're aiming for now, so this is what we're aiming for, is a show document that contains additional information. So for example, we're going to extract out writer information and put it into the embedded creator and to the writer's collection here. And we're going to extract out episode information for the episode count and to calculate the first air date. OK, so let's go back to code and see how do we can do that. Well, the first thing we're going to do is go to our actually entity, entity types here and uncomment out these fields. So these are the additional data that we want to store in our show document. And there's two forms of it. Simple things like date only, first air, that's a simple property. But then for the additional writer information, we actually want to create, remember, a sub document. So I've created this sub document. Uh, and we're actually even going to put one of those in the episode as well. So we, we keep the episode co-located with its writer. Um, so if we're not going to have to change any of the EF mapping here. If you're familiar with EF mapping, you'll know that we have an on-model creating. It's got some mapping in here that we've used to set up some relationships, but we're not doing anything else. We don't need to change that here. This will naturally be picked up by EF as an embedded document when it builds the model. OK, so we've got these things now uh, in our entity type, but we actually need to make sure that they are used. Uh, and to do that, we have to go and take a look at our add episode methods. So what we're going to do here, when we're adding an episode, remember that's the one that we can make a little bit slower, we're going to do some extra work. So the first thing we do, the add episode, get, we get called with a show ID and then various information about the episode. So we find the show. We look that up. So EF does the query for that. And then we can also, because we have this relationship defined between shows and episodes and we're storing that foreign key, you can tell EF to go load those episodes. So now we've got all the episodes for the show loaded. So that data is in memory and we can work with it. Um, we don't do this automatically, and even if you use include, because you need to be conscious that if you're going to load a load of documents into menu, that's quite expensive. So right now, that's an explicit thing you have to do. We're looking at ways to make that easier, but it's a it's a balance between sending into a pit of people into a pit of failure uh, as opposed to um, making things easier. Okay, we're also going to do the same to look up the writer. And uh, if the writer doesn't exist, we'll create a new one. And then EF will, in its typical way, take care of creating a new document for the writer if it's a new document. Otherwise, it will not do so because it knows it exists in the, in the database already. So after all that, we create our episode, we add it to the episodes. So that's what we've been doing uh, up till now. But we need to now calculate that additional data that we're duplicating into the document. OK, so I'm going to now uh, do that by setting the embedded writer and setting it to information that we got from the writer that we loaded or created up, up top there. So that's got it into the episode. And then we'll do the same for the show here. Remember, even though we're adding an episode, we're taking the information from that episode and we're making sure that the show gets updated, including running a query. Uh, this is actually a link to objects query just running inside the data that EF has been has loaded to pre-calculate the top writers and put that into the show. Um, I must point out here that there can be consistent issues that can come up when you're dealing with these kinds of updates that are going duplicating data and going across different documents. So we're not going to get into that now because we don't have time, but that's something to be very aware of. OK, so now we've got the additional data in our entity types. We've uh, populated the entity types with that data. And we're all we have to do now is update our queries to use them. OK, so I've got some snippets off to the side here. And I'm going to go up to the top of our minimal API and go to the, this is the get shows API. And here, instead of us calculating these things in the database, we're actually now just going to, to take extract them directly from the document. right? So there's no additional uh, joins or anything like that needed. Likewise, when we go down here to get show, we're going to do the same thing. And again, you'll see there's then we're not now executing that complex query on the database. We're just doing simple projection query of getting the information out of the document. OK, so if I did all that right, then when I run this, uh, we should actually see it get data out of the Cosmos database and produce the same uh, results that uh, we had before. OK, so it's, uh, it's just starting up here. Yeah, maybe I didn't run it. I might have just built it. Okay, I've run it now. Okay, good. So here we go. We've got the Swagger API. I'm going to do the get shows like before. Execute on that. 
and it has indeed returned the data like we expected. But if we go now look at what EF executed, in this case, instead of that complex query, we actually have a simple query to Cosmos that is taking data only out of the show's uh, database. So this is something, uh, this could potentially be a point read. That's something we're looking into. But this is already a very efficient way to get your data uh, for that API. Likewise, if I then go to the next API by copying and pasting this, down here, try out the get show, copy that, execute that. Again, we get the data back. And again, we see we had a very simple query. Notice that this query actually brings back different information from the previous query, because we're, even though we've got everything co-located in the document, we don't actually need all of the information for each of those queries. So we're selecting out only the things that we want. So previously, we weren't getting back the uh, the um, top writers because we didn't need it. But now we are getting back the top writers because we need it. OK, so that's basically um, what I wanted to show you. And um, just let me recap what we did. So we created this, uh, embed this document with embedded information in it that is copied, duplicated from other places so that we can efficiently retrieve it. Uh, and we can see now, if we look at that response body, everything that goes to that response body is now coming from that single document rather than coming from three different places as it was in the relational model. So in summary, um, we, if you have a single service, it may need to get data from multiple tables, multiple locations. As your application evolves, that's more and more likely to be the case. Uh, Co-locating that data into a document can be a great way to improve perf, especially when you can trade off updates uh, in the document against uh, the fast read performance. And there's other ways to do updates like change feeds and things like that um, that we're hoping to look into soon. So uh, Entity Framework facilitates this kind of thing uh, by maintaining your model. So you have a rich model structure. Remember, we saw the foreign keys and relationships we were able to load. Convention-based mapping, so it automatically embedded the uh, embedded writer into the document since that was the natural shape for that for a document database. Uh, and of course, we didn't actually change very much code. Most of the code that you use against EF for your relational database has stayed the same. We haven't really changed a whole lot. In the future, we're really hoping to add more extended support um, and uh, so look for that coming in the, probably not in EF9, uh, but uh, in future releases. In EF9 specifically, we're really focusing a lot on Cosmos query pipeline and updating some of the fundamentals to bring it up to the level that the relational offerings are at. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to the people in the .NET Data Access team. That's Andrew, myself, Marisi, Sam, Shai, Jiri, and Luis. Uh, that's, this is all their work that I'm showing. So thank you to them. And of course, our community contributors. Thank you very much to all of those. If you want to find out more, there's links there to EF Docs, uh, our EF repo on GitHub, everything open source in the community. And then a lot of the things I've talked about here, we've gone into more detail in our EF community standup videos that are all available on YouTube. I think there's uh, about 70 of them on there now. So be sure to go look at those and uh, find out more. Thank you very much.